It will take just a moment, and then I'm going to introduce our performers, or our song leaders for today. Here we go. Perfect. All right. I am going to first ask our friend who is playing Eliza Doolittle to... It will take just a moment, and then I'm going to introduce our performers, <laughs> our, our song leaders for today. Welcome everybody, I'm Andrea Leap. It's nice to see you all and we're excited to sing some of these great tunes for you today. So, with all of our hats. Yes. A festival of hats and my hats are courtesy of actually a student of mine who I suspected would have an extensive hat collection and in fact, there were more hats than I could possibly wear in the span of this sing-along uh, for me to choose from, so. Alfred P. Doolittle, will you say hello? I will certainly say hello. And yes, I have a hat. It's not my usual glamorous hat, but I don't think Alfie had that kind of style. I think his style was a more physical style. I'm Vicki Mountain, happy to see you all. And Freddie. Joey, will you unmute and say hello for us? Hello, everybody. Let me spotlight myself. Here we go. Hi. Um, I am very excited to once again get to play a role that I am way too old to perform, and I never got to perform when I was younger. So thank you, Andrea, for <laughs> giving us this opportunity to, um, to do My Fair Lady which is one of the first musicals I was ever introduced to by my Aunt Teresa. We used to um, watch this show all like three and a half hours of it at her house whenever she babysat me. Great. And our last um, song leader today and co-host will be Jerry Rubino. Jerry, can you start your video and say hello? I am pushing buttons. Is it working? Can you see me? Ah, there we go. Hi everybody, Jerry Rubino here and um, I have loved the music of, uh, from this show for, uh, since I was a kid. Um, I'm dating myself here, but there was an orchestra leader named Percy Faith who um, used to have an orchestra, and my um, aunt had a whole LP of the hits from uh, this show, and so I just have loved it, the music. It's so well written, and it's so hard to sing. So um, you better be singing along with us, folks. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I want to again just thank everyone for joining us today, and we're going to have Jerry kick off our sing-along with a little bit of music that is the overture. Take it away, Jerry.
So I'm going to talk just so I can catch my breath after just playing a few notes. Um, I uh, am just thrilled to get to uh, have to or get to practice something during these days. Uh, it's just fun to uh, get our voices in tune and try to see if we can play at the same time. But I wanted to dedicate this next song to uh, the members of my voice classes who I know are tuning in today. I saw a few of them, and I hope at some point we'll see this. We, we spend so much time on vowels, and I, uh, we have always uh, struggled uh, with how many different sounds the letter A stands for in the English language. So this song seems to speak a, a little bit of class distinction, and um, uh, I just uh, think that you will have some level of identification. <clears throat> Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? This verbal class distinction by now should be antique. If you spoke as she does, sir, instead of the way you do, why, you might be selling flowers too. An Englishman's way of speaking absolutely classifies him. The moment he talks, he makes some other Englishman despise him. One common language I'm afraid we'll never get. Oh, why can't the English learn to set a good example to people whose English is painful to your ears? The Scotch and the Irish leave them close to tears. There's even our places where English completely disappears. In America! They haven't used it for years. Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? Norwegians learn Norwegian. The Greeks are taught their Greek. In France, every Frenchman knows the language from A to Z. The French really never care what they do, just so they're pronouncing it correctly. Arabians, Turks. Arabians learn Arabian with the speed of summer lightning. The Hebrews learn it backwards, which is absolutely frightening. But use proper English, you're regarded as a freak. Why can't the English? Why can't the English learn to speak? So we're going to jump right into Wouldn't It Be Loverly, and during this time of quarantine, I'm sure that we're all trying to um, keep ourselves busy by acquiring new skills, and I have finally learned to whistle during this time period, um, and it's still pretty, pretty rough, but I'm going to highlight my whistling in the second verse of this, so please join me on that. <laughs> Lots of eat, warm face, warm hands. 
in this time, in these crazy times, it is useful to have a little bit of luck, don't you think? I think about my own life. I must have had a lot of good luck to have survived all of the bad luck I had. And so now, in your very best Cockney accents, I would love for you to sing along with a little bit of luck. The Lord above gave man an arm of iron so he could do his job and never shirk. The Lord above gave man an arm of iron but with a little bit of luck, with a little bit a luck. Someone else will do the blinking work with a little bit, little bit with a little bit, a little bit with a little bit of luck you'll never work. The Lord above made man to help his neighbor no matter where in land or sea or foam. The Lord above made man to help his neighbor but with a little bit a luck, a little bit a luck. When he comes around, you won't be home. With a little bit, with a little bit, with a little bit, with a little bit, <laughs> with a little bit of luck, you won't be home. Oh, you can walk the straight and narrow, but with a little bit of luck, you'll run amok. The gentle sex was made for man to marry to share his nest and see his food is cooked. The gentle sex was made for man to marry, but with a little bit of luck, with a little bit of luck, you can have it all and not get hooked. With a little bit, 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 with a little bit of luck, you won't get hooked. <laughs> with a little bit, with a little bit, with a little bit, with a little bit, with a little bit of blooming luck.
What was that? The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Again. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. I think she's got it. I think she's got it. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. By George, she's got it. By George, she's got it. Now once again, where does it rain? On the plain, on the plain. And where that soggy plain? In Spain, in Spain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. In Hartford, Hereford, and Hanford. to let me come. Now once again, where does it rain? On the plain, on the plain. That blasted plain. In Spain, in Spain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. adjustment here. All right. <clears throat> Are all the 
horses waiting for the queue to fly away. Twas a gripping, absolutely ripping moment at the Ascot opening day. Pulses rushing, faces flushing, heartbeats speed up. I have never been so keyed up. Any second now, they'll begin to run. Hogabell is ringing, they are springing forward. Look, it has begun. What a frenzied moment that was! Didn't they enjoy an exhausting pace? Twas a thrilling, absolutely chilling running of the Ascot opening race. If you hear a dog, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> He's much louder if I put him in his kennel, so <laughs> hopefully the neighbors will be okay with us. Um, this next song, On the Street Where You Live, um, is, fun, is sung by Freddie in the show, and the, uh, there's a great story about the actor who played him in the movie, Jeremy Brett. He, um, <laughs> he loved to go tanning, and this whole movie was shot in Hollywood on set, it was the most expensive movie made to date at that time. And, uh, and Jeremy loved to go tanning between his shoots. <laughs> and at one point, the director had to approach him and say, Jeremy, if you tan one more time, we're cutting you out of the movie because every time we film another scene, you come back a different color. And you're not looking very British anymore. So thankfully, I can do this with a tan and get away with it. She mentioned how her aunt bit off the spoon. <laughs> she completely done me in. And my heart went on a journey to the moon. When she told about her father and the gin. <laughs> and I never heard a more enchanting farce than the moment when she shouted, Move your bloomin'! Stare, they don't bother me. For 
there's no else on earth that I would rather be. Let the time go by. I won't care if I can be here on the street where you start our um, little intermission by just letting you know that all of the performers that you have seen, or should I say song leaders, mm -hmm. since this is a sing-along, um, are teachers with the McPhail Music for Life program. And if you have enjoyed their performances, if you are interested in um, being able to spend some more time with them and learn from them, and maybe learn more about um, Broadway shows, um, vocal techniques, um, even some of the nuts and bolts of learning to read music, that they have a number of classes that they are going to be teaching for us this summer. If you'd like to have a chance to take a look at the whole list, um, you can visit our website at mcphail.org. And if you click on the um, at top of the page, it will say for adults, and then go down to classes. Um, it will show you the whole list of summer classes um, in particular for McPhail Music for Life. So I can give you a few examples really quickly um, and that Eliza Doolittle, Andrea Leap, will be teaching some unwrapping music classes, which give us a chance to learn more um, uh, music appreciation, some of the science behind certain music um, topics. Um, so those are some of the things that she'll be teaching this summer. And she'll also be working um, and co-teaching um, a class with Joey, who is our Freddie Eisenford um, this, um, this afternoon. They're going to be doing this cabaret class. So um, as you can tell, they're very expressive and they're going to be teaching you how to express yourself um, and maybe tell some stories from your own personal experiences through um, story and song. And that's a really unique class in that you'll have four sessions where you're together as a class, but then you also get some private coaching with one of them on the side. So that's all part of the class if you sign up for that. Um, Jerry's going to be teaching his voice classes one and two this summer, and he's also going to be offering um, a nuts and bolts of music theory. So if you haven't 
um, you feel a little bit unsteady about whether you could read a score to be part of a choir, or it's been a while and you'd like to kind of brush up on a few of those skills, um, that's a great way to have a little bit of a refresher or maybe to start from scratch um, and learn something new. We know that this has been a difficult time um, when sometimes it feels like a hard, what do we do to fill our um, days and to mark the passage of time that's meaningful. And we feel a little secluded in our own houses, not being able to go around our friends and that as much. So we wanted to, these classes to be things that would be fun, um, enjoyable, that they would mark our days and weeks and maybe give us some purpose and meaning and a chance to be together with some people that um, maybe enjoy the same things or passionate about the same things and a chance to continue to learn and engage. So um, we're really excited to offer more summer classes than usual. So that's my plug for McPhail Music for Life. And I hope that maybe you'll think about joining us and spreading the word if you know somebody who might be interested. I'm going to unmute us now. Um, I know there are a few things to share. And I wanted to call on Sulia um, because she had a story about seeing this show on Broadway. Let me see if I can find her. Sulia and Tommaso. I don't think I see her on the list now. Um, I did also see a lot of fun hats. Sulia had okay. to leave. She did have to leave. I saw her leave. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And, and I just want to put in a plug for my happy hour class, which is the four Mondays of July. And I'm doing <laughs> jazz, jazz happy hour I on Mondays it. from 5.30 to 6.30. And we are going to explore the thrilling three, uh, Ella, Ella, Sarah, and Billy. <laughs> hey, Tom, how are you? Thanks, Vicki. Um, I actually... I'm sorry, I missed your class when I was talking about the different offerings. So thanks for bringing that to our attention. I have something I just wanted to share for a second, if I could. Yeah. Um, I talked about before we started tonight that I learned how to, I learned about this musical from my Aunt Teresa. And my Aunt Teresa is now on this Zoom with us. So I'm singling her out. <laughs> And um, I just wanted to, oh, there she is. <laughs> I just wanted to thank her for introducing me to my fair lady. And I have to say, Aunt Teresa also introduced me to John Denver and she taught me how to play the piano. She was my first piano teacher. So I have a lot of um, debt to owe my Aunt Teresa. Love you. Well, we're thanking Aunt Teresa too for instilling some of those musical roots in your heritage. Janine, I wanted to have you show us the picture in your background. Juan Inn in the Cotswolds, the town of Bybury, okay. which is a beautiful old town. Um, and it's been there a long time, mm -hmm. a long time, hundreds of years. Right across from it is a wonderful river, clean river, the Colm, and a trout hatchery and an old mill, and a, there's another area in Bybury that's very famous called Arlington Row, which is a group, a group of old almshouses. I think they're the mo longest continuously lived in building or something in England. Okay. So, fun. I saw another fun spotlight. Um, and I have a friend here too. Oh, you do? Yes. <laughs> Karen, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Ah, the Tower of London, Tower Bridge. <laughs> and did you have a fun visit there? Last year, uh, three of us went, friends, went to London for a week. We stayed at the Taj Hotel and toured absolutely everything we could in seven days. And then we went to a flower show in the Cotswolds and uh, got to visit a different manner or two every day. So nice memories from there. Thanks. Great. I'm going to unmute and show my mom too. My parents are in Kentucky and she has her derby hat. I thought that was very authentic. <laughs> the Kentucky Derby, if you haven't heard this year, will be in August, I believe. So.
Well, I don't want to take too much time away. I am going to go ahead and return us to our program. And we're going to go back to um, an contract. And Jerry's going to kick us off with a little bit of piano music to get us into the mood to set the tone for the rest of our program. So I'm going to turn it back over here. Jerry. achievement. Absolutely fantastic. I salute you. Nonsense. The silly people don't know their own silly business. Tonight, old man, you did it. You did it. You did it. You said that you would do it, and indeed you did. I thought that you would rue it, I doubted you'd do it. But now I must admit it, that succeeded you did. You should get a medal or be even made a knight. It was nothing, it really nothing. All alone you hurdled every obstacle in sight. Now wait, now wait, give credit where it's due. A lot of the glory goes to you. But you're the one who did it, who did it, who did it. As sturdy as Gibraltar, not a second did you falter. There's no doubt about it. You did it. Costume change. <clears throat> There's just a few more hours before you, <laughs> before it's all the time you've got. I'm going to start all over again. My gosh. <laughs> There's just a few more hours. That's all the time you've got. A few more hours before they tie the knot. <clears throat> there are drinks and girls all over London, and you've got to track them down in just a few more hours. <laughs> I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong, the bells are gonna chime. Pull out the stopper, let's have a whopper. But get me to the church on time. I got to be there in the morning. Spruced up and looking in me prime. Girls, come and kiss me. Show me that you'll miss me. But get me to the church on time. If I am dancing, roll up the floor. If I am whistling, me out the door for I'm getting married in the morning. Ding 
ding dong, the bells are gonna chime. Kick up a rumpus, but don't lose the compass. And get me to the church, get me to the church. For God's sake, get me to the church on time. I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong, the bells are gonna chime. Drug me and jail me, stab me and mail me, but get me to the church on time. I got to be there in the morning, all spruced up and looking in me prime. Some bloke who's able, lift up the table and get me to the church on time. If I am flying, then shoot me down. If I am wooing, get her out of town. For I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong, the bells are gonna chime. Feather and tar me, call out the army, but get me to the church, get me to the church. For God's sake, get me to the church on time. Pickering. Why can't a woman be more like a man? Why can't a woman be more like a man? Man is so honest, so thoroughly square, eternally noble, historically fair. Who, when you win, will always give your back a pat? Why can't a woman be like that? Why does everyone do what the others do? Can't a woman learn to use her head? Why do they do everything their mothers do? Why do they grow up like their fathers instead? Why does a woman take after a man? Men are so pleasant, so easy to please. Whenever you're with them, you're always at ease. Would you be slighted if I didn't speak for hours? Of course not. Would you be livid if I had a drink or two? Nonsense. Would you be wounded if I never sent you flowers? Never. Why can't a woman be like you? One man in a million may shout a bit. Now and then there's violence with effects. One perhaps whose truthfulness you doubt a bit. But by and large, we are a marvelous sex. Why can't a woman behave like a man? Men are so friendly, good natured, and kind. A better companion you never will find. If I were hours late for dinner, would you bellow? Of course not. If I forgot your silly birthday, would you fuss? Nonsense! Would you complain if I took out another fellow? Oh, never! Why can't a woman be like us? What a fool I was, what a dominated fool, to think you were the earth and sky. What a fool I was, what an adulterated fool, what a mutton-headed dot was I. No, my reverberating friend, you are not the beginning and the end. You impudent hussy, there isn't an idea in your head or a word in your mouth I haven't put there. There'll be spring every year without you. England still will be here without you. There'll be 
fruit on the tree and a shore by the sea there'll be crumpets and tea without you art and music will thrive without you somehow keats will survive without you and there still will be rain on that plain down in spain even that will remain without you i can do So well, you can go to Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire. They will still rule the land without you. Windsor Castle will stand without you. And without much ado, we can all muddle through without you. You brazen. I've grown accustomed to her face. She almost makes the day begin. I've grown accustomed to the tune. She whistles night and noon. Her smiles, her frowns, her ups, her downs are second nature to me now like breathing out and breathing in I was serenely independent and content before we met surely I could always be that way again and yet I've grown accustomed to her looks, accustomed to her voice, accustomed to her Good morning every day, her joys, her woes, her highs, her lows are second nature to me now, like breathing out and breathing in, I'm very grateful she's a woman and so easy to forget rather like a habit one can always break and yet i've grown accustomed to the trace of something in the air accustomed to Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> the Lord above gave liquor for temptation to see if man could turn away from sin. The Lord above gave liquor for temptation, but with a little bit of luck, with a little bit of luck, when temptation comes, you'll give right in. With, with a, little a little bit, little bit, bit with, with a little bit, bit with a little bit, bit, of bit of luck, you'll give right in. in. With, with a little, little bit, bit of it, with, with a little, little bit, bit of it, with a little, little bit of it, with a little bit of Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us this afternoon for this presentation. And if you